Hi XR developers, in today's video we're going to look at Meta's XR Simulator, which is its own XR runtime, which lets us test our games directly in the Unity editor without having the actual device in hand. Keep in mind that this only works for Windows at the moment. Furthermore, much like the MRUK or the Mixed Reality Utility Kit, we can simulate our application in a variety of synthetic environments that Meta provides to us. We can even import real spaces from our Meta Quest devices into the simulator and even add or remove furniture or walls from it, so therefore we can also create completely custom rooms. Lastly, we can even test multiplayer games with the XR Simulator, which we will look at in this video as well. If you like this type of content, please take a second to leave a like and subscribe. If you would like to get access to all the source code, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. And if you have any questions, feel free to join our growing XR developer community on Discord. And now, let's get started with Meta's XR Simulator. As always, let's set up our Unity project with the Meta XR SDK. The all-in-one SDK already comes with the Meta XR Simulator package. You can also get the XR Simulator directly from the Unity Asset Store. Furthermore, I would like to show some use cases that utilize the Mixed Reality Utility Kit, so we install that package separately. I also want to import some samples and then also install some of the OVR interaction samples to better show the capabilities of the XR Simulator. As always, make sure to apply all changes in the Project Setup tool to apply the correct settings to your game. Let's open up our first sample scene. Then, all we have to do to enable the simulator is to go to Oculus, then Meta XR Simulator, and then activate it. Then, when we start the play mode, we can see that a second Unity window opens, which is our simulator runtime. Here, we have many settings we can adjust. Firstly, let's take a look at the device setup. We can choose between different MetaQuest devices. Then IPD means interpupillary distance and simulates accurately how the angle of the camera will look like depending on our IPD inside the device. We can also simulate different refresh rates here. Lastly, we have the option to select and unselect the left or right controller. The input simulation lets us adjust our movement speed and see the position and orientation of our headset and controllers, as well as which buttons we are currently pressing. In the graphic details, we can observe some layer details, where in mixed reality apps, we could, for example, see an additional pass-through layer here. Then we have something called swap chains. Think of these as a series of picture frames that your app prepares in advance, quickly switching between them to create the illusion of motion in VR or AR, ensuring the visuals appear smooth and responsive. Next, we have a record and replay tab. Here we can set a file location and then press record. We can then record some gameplay, and once we are done, we can simply stop the recording and hit replay if we want to watch it again. We can also take screenshots while recording. Then, the telemetry tab is simple there, to let us share our data with Meta or not. Next, we do have some more settings we will look at more in detail in this video. One is for importing our own room scans, and the other one is to enable hand tracking for testing. Lastly, under Input Bindings, we can see that we can control the simulator with either our keyboard and mouse, or even an Xbox controller. Under Controller Input, you can see which key is simulating which button. This is taking some time to get used to, but you can simulate your application pretty well once you got the hang of it. Let's look at another sample scene. As you can see here, we can also simulate hands with our controllers and grab objects. In the Input Simulation tab, by default, we move our headset and both hands at the same time. However, if we use the bracket keys, we can actually switch the active inputs and move each part individually. This is especially helpful if we don't want to move our player, but rather just test an interaction with a single controller or hand. Now let's finally open our Mixed Reality Utility Kit scene. As you might have seen in a previous video, the Utility Kit lets us simulate different room models. As you can see, we can walk around the room with our simulator and shoot the sphere. Also, we can easily manipulate the menu by Y or H to go up or down, and then select an option by pressing the B button. For example, we can visualize the anchors in our room just like we would with an actual MetaQuest device. Now, what if we actually want to see a room instead of this black skybox? Meta provides us with a few synthetic environments through the simulator. To load them, 
we go to Oculus, then Synthetic Environment Server, and then we load one of these three rooms. Once loaded, we can just let it run in the background and enter play mode again. As you can see now, the Mixed Reality Utility Kit perfectly fits the planes and volumes to the synthetic environment. Fantastic! To stop the synthetic environment, we simply go to Stop Server. Now I would like to show you how we can easily import our own room models into the simulator. Under Packages, we can go to Meta XR Simulator, and then we can find a folder called Data Recorders. Here we want to install this Scene Data Recorder on our MetaQuest device. Inside our headset, we can go to the Settings, and then look for our apps. Here we would like to search for the Scene Data Recorder sample, and then enable both toggles. Then we can go ahead and make a new room scan or use an existing one. Make sure to take enough time here to make it as accurate as possible and also add your furniture to the scene model. Once the room scan is completed, the application will save our room model to the internal storage and quit the application. Back on our PC, we can connect our headset and to see our MetaQuest drive on our PC, we accept the dialog window inside our MetaQuest. We can then simply open the folder on our PC and immediately find the scene anchors empty room JSON file. Save this file anywhere you want for later use. Let's now go back to Unity and start the simulator. Back in the settings, we can enable the load scene option. This gives us an input field to select a file from our PC. Of course, here we want to select the JSON file that we saved from our MetaQuest device. After loading, we click on Exit Simulator to apply our changes. So the next time we open the simulator, we can see that we are now in the room we loaded from our device. Amazing! But that is not all. Let's say you are about to buy a new table for your room, and you already want to test your application, as if the table was already there. You can easily do that by creating a copy of the JSON file. Then, we want to open up the copy and add our table there. We do that by first creating a unique ID for our new anchor. We can just copy an existing one and change a few letters or numbers. Next, we can specify 2D planes that represent our walls, floors and ceilings. Since we want to add a new table, we will go down to the 3D volumes. Here we just duplicate an existing anchor and add our new ID. Here we can also adjust the extent and offset of our anchor. Then. We also need to add our anchor to the loca table. This where we specify the orientation and position of the object. Under room layout, you can find the room anchor, which is the center of our entire room and which anchors act as our walls, ceiling and floor. Feel free to customize this however you like. Under semantic labels, we finally have to specify what our new anchor is. Therefore, we just duplicate an existing table and replace the ID with our new ID. Lastly, we have to add our new anchor ID to the space container. Now we can finally give this a try. As you already know by now, we can start our simulator and then load our new JSON file, which represents our custom room. After restarting our simulator after uploading our file, we can see that we successfully created a new table. Now, in my case, the smaller table is inside the bigger one but feel free to adjust the position and orientation however you like. Let me show you now another feature of the Meta XR simulator, which is the hand tracking. For this, we have to make sure that on our OVR manager, the tracking origin type is set to stage. And also under quest features, the hand tracking support has to be set to controllers and hands. We can then start the simulator and under settings, let's enable the hand tracking. We can then restart the simulator again like we did for the scene loading. Fantastic! As you can see, after reloading the simulator, we can now see our hands that are in thumbs up gesture. Let's move on to the last part of this tutorial, where I'm going to show you how to test your multiplayer games with Meta's XR simulator. We will use the Norm Core multiplayer framework for this use case, since it is fast and easy to get started. I will fast forward the setup but basically we just import the Unity package and then create a new app ID in the Norm Core dashboard. Watch my full Norm Core series to get a detailed setup. Let's open up the real-time plus VR player scene and enter the app ID. If we quickly test the scene, we can see how we can spawn and control our avatar. 
Even the voice works as you can see from the mouth movement. Great! Now we are ready to clone our project. I simply copy the project folder and paste it into another subfolder. I will rename the folder to get a better overview and then open the copied project with my Unity Hub. Once both projects are open with the same app ID, we can start the XR simulator on both windows. We can simply display the simulator windows next to each other and as you can see, we have two VR players in our scene now. Fantastic. Now, as you can see there might be a slight delay depending on your internet and what simulator window you are focusing. I hope this tool will get you started building amazing XR experiences, even without having a physical device in your hands. Alright guys, and that's it. I hope you learned a lot. And again, please take a second to leave a like and subscribe. Support me on Patreon if you want to get access to the source code. Or join our growing XR developer community on Discord. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next one.